found that missing step in. It's about 20 metres around the corner from where it's supposed to be. Ah, and that's where the poly braid's been snapped right there. Does anyone know how to hot wire train Australian kangaroos? Wonderful same effect over in the States and Canada with deer when they put out poly braid. G'day folks, Jason here from the Outer Farm. We're actually on the Outer Farm property today. As you've seen from the intro, I've got a bit of damage. I'm thinking it's from kangaroos because I haven't got any livestock missing on this side of the fence and none of them seem to be stressed out. This is not a good sign neither. Definitely snapped that poly braid. That was a two strand poly braid pre preventing the cows from getting into that erosion area of mine. Definitely a step in missing there. I'll have to walk through that erosion to find it. Found the end of the poly braid. It's definitely been snapped. It's broke on the stainless cores and also the nylon string. It's about some 30, 40 foot away from the erosion. So they've hit it at force. Well, it's two, two places now. I'm hoping the kangaroos by now are hot wire trained. Or does anyone out there know how to hot wire train strain kangaroos? I wonder if the same in the States happens with deer in Canada. How do you guys control that when they keep running through the poly braid? I don't know if I've got a solution. Hopefully, in this gully erosion, I'm going to put a temporary hot two two strand hot wire through the erosion. That's going to eliminate the uses of poly braid and step ins, and hopefully, be a bit more of a physical barrier than kangaroos, so they don't break it. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is put some timeless five footers in through that gully erosion. And then going to join some high tensile wire, only two strands, one at about 42 inches, like they used to on the trial property. I know they don't jump over that, and one about 24 inches to stop the calves. I'll go through now and we'll whip a snipper it, and we'll throw the timeless T post in and run the wire. The reason I had the poly braid around the erosion in the first place was for two reasons. First being to keep the ca uh, cattle or livestock out of the erosion. And secondly, to stop them crawling underneath the fence, because this fence goes straight across the erosion hole. And underneath is that big void. What I'm gonna do now is, like I mentioned, put the fence through there. I think I might allow the cattle to walk through that erosion. It's gotta be battered down eventually anyway, and then rerun the fence. Once I arrest the water solution or that compaction on top of the hill and slow the flow down, then I can batter this out. The cows might get in there now and batter and cave some of that in for me. Also, I'm thinking is that roads grass we put in there is now growing up. To keep it in a vegetative state, like I keep mentioning across the paddock, it needs the cattle to chew it. If they chew it and disturb the soil, it'll force that roots of that plant to go in the ground deeper. And also, it'd give me good soil to see contact with the roads grass that has dropped into that bank. And when it does rain, that should germinate and thicken up the pasture and hold the bank together. Well, in theory, I know that works in the paddock. With this steep erosion, we'll find out.
perfect. I'm just going to terminate this end off here with a split bolt. Get a bit of tension on the other end, do the same the other end. Then we'll run the second wire. Washer clamp back on, do him up. Just to be double safe, I'm just going to bend that high tensile wire back over top of that split bolt. I know it's not going to come off, but just a bit paranoid now after those kangaroos went through that spring gate in the poly braid here. I've got both wires run now. I'm going to put them through this bit of poly pipe. It'll make sense in a minute. Let me finish this first, one step at a time. So to stop this, if I can't tie it straight onto that, as I'm tensioning this wire, that'll sag that line down. There's a fair bit of play over the gully here. I reckon that'd have to be at least, well, it looks like about 20, 30 foot. So that'll just keep sagging down. To eliminate that, I've used this timeless T-post. Because this is this PVC, it's the insulator. The wires can go straight through the hole and it won't short out. So that's where my second wire is, so I'll go through that hole there. Use my split bolt. Straight through there. Two wires. Pull it through, get my desired tension I'm after. That's the bottom wire, got him where I want him, so I just bend him over. So he doesn't go back with me. That's that one. Now the top one, do the same with. Pull him through, got the desired tension I'm after. That's about it. Like I said, these aren't meant to be a physical barrier, it's a mental barrier. Once they touch them, they're going to get shocked and they won't go near it. So bend it down so it doesn't... Alrighty, I now got that point. I can just tighten up this split bolt. The reason for this poly pipe is this bottom wire is my earth wire and I don't want these hot wires coming up from the gully touching and earthing out on that earth wire. So this poly pipe is going to act as an insulator. I'm just going to drill a hole through there and wire it to this hot wire. That way if it was to get bumped by an animal it's not going to earth out. Job's done. Well, That's well, it. A... Didn't work out too bad. Two hot wires running right through the centre of this gully erosion and up the other side to keep my calves and heifers in. Righto folks, I appreciate you hanging out with me this afternoon and getting this gully done. So have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening guys, wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later. I was bringing the livestock. That's a kangaroo fruit.